Hey guys, it's Danny. Today I'm gonna give you a grow room tour. Yes, I'm up to no good in the greenhouse slash grow room. It's not a greenhouse, I just like to call it that way. So there is a lot to see today and I think I owed you a tour. I think I should actually make this general tour a seasonal thing. So how about we call this the fall or autumn grow room tour and the next one will be in the winter. It kind of keeps me on my toes as well to maintain things relatively tidy. Anyway, so get comfortable, get a beverage, get cozy if you're lucky enough to have lower temperatures in your area and before we start don't forget to give this video a like because it really helps it out and why not subscribe I post multiple times a week and it's completely free but if you're feeling a little extra and you want to further support the channel do consider becoming a member checking out the affiliate links down below checking out the merch or using the super thanks option below my videos right let's just start shall we let's start with this area yes I know we don't have work kits here but we will in the the future. As you will see with my other shelves of this type, I will have aquariums on top and orchids on the bottom. So Johnny, he will not stay here. He will eventually get a little shallow tank like this one. And P.S. if you don't know my aquariums, you can visit my second channel. I'll link you to it down below. I talk about this arrangement here. Today though, we talk about our kids. And if you're wondering what shelf this is, it's an IKEA shelf. It's called uh, Vjalbo. Yes, I am mispronouncing it and I am sorry indeed, but I have no idea how to pronounce it. So I'll put the name on the screen. It's the Vjalbo. I really like this particular cab not cabinet shelf because on top I can put heavier stuff like tanks. Usually on top I don't display orchids because I don't have any way to illuminate them, which is elegant, let's say, or I'm up for it. So the fact that it has wooden shelves is perfect for some tiny tanks. But let's move on. That's a project for the future. Here is my discus tank. Again, we're not gonna dwell too much on it because we need to look at the orchids. So here's my second shell bow. So here's my second shelf of the type. And as you can see on the top, I have a tank and below I have orchids. Now next to my tank, we have a zygopetalum. It's temporary sitting here because I need to do something with its shelf. You'll see what I mean. It was also in bloom and the flower spike was pendant and it just looked nice here, but this is temporary. Down below, we have some Cattleya orchids. Now, I like to group my orchids based on, let's say they're not genus necessarily because these are hybrids, but for example, here I have Brassavola hybrids and the vast majority of them are Brassavola hybrids. The ones that fit because these shelves are 40 centimeters high and obviously there are orchids which are taller than that. But whoever fit here and is a Brassavola hybrid, it went here. So you can see here in the back the Pro Catavola golden peacock. Am I a little overexposed? I might be. Is this better? I hope it is. So you know already this one, it has been in bloom for a lot of time, but you don't know this one. She is a first time bloomer. I just purchased it. It's the BC Golden Glory and I got it a few months ago in one of my orchid hauls. We're gonna talk about it in a different video, but there you go. She is blooming and she has another flower spike. Let me check. Right here, there it is. So she's doing absolutely fantastic under these lights. Yes, of course, I have my barinas. And by the way, you might consider that the light is a little too pink. Well, in reality, it's really not that pink. But for the purposes of this video and just to keep things as real as possible, I'm gonna leave on the light. Maybe I'm gonna try to correct the color in my editing software. But yeah, cameras have an issue with the light of these barinas. In reality, it's pretty nice. It's kind of a daylight, a warm daylight but on camera it always looks pink. It's not as pink as it seems. Down below we have some more Cattleyas, not necessarily Brassavola hybrids, but again Cattleyas that are of medium size and they fit here. And do I have any flower spikes? I think I have some buds forming in this uh, pseudobulb. This is an orchid or a Cattleya that doesn't produce a sheath. This is the Cosmic Delight, beautiful orchid. And I think she will bloom again very soon. And below I have storage. I've discovered that orchids that I put on the very last shelf, 
I never actually get to see and admire because I always have to squat or lean to see what's in there. And particularly on these shelves, which are not very tall, yeah, I really cannot see anything. Look, this is what I see from my height. Basically nothing. So I decided the bottom shelves will just be storage from now on or a place where I can I can keep my plugs and stuff, you know. Nothing of interest because one, I absolutely do need storage in my life. I really do. Things are everywhere. <laughs> I am a messy person and yeah, two, I cannot really display records here anyway. So this is my second Pjalbo. Here I have a tank and some stored glass panels, but this will be for something else in the future. This is my third Pshalpo. On top there is a tank which I'm not using at the moment, but I will set it up. And here I just actually finished installing the lights for this shelf. So what I did was I moved around the barinas. I took some from my glass shelf because I did some changes there as well, you'll see. And I also took some from the bottom shelf, the other Shalbo, it had lights on the bottom, took them, put them here. Hey presto, I have two more shelves to display orchids on. So again, this is temporary here. They're not permanently sitting here. I have a few orchids that are not very tall and they can fit here. The Dendrobium Cuthbertonis, some are doing really great. This one has a bud. It looks really, really nice, but I know they're suffering or some are suffering. This guy is suffering. This guy is suffering. I cannot keep up with watering. Are you kidding me? Um, not even in these conditions. No, it just doesn't work. So I have another idea for them that I'm gonna show you a little bit about in this tour. It's a very fresh project. So yeah, not everybody's in the particular, um, let's say, con not container, setup. Well, you'll see what I mean. And in the back, I have some habanarias. Look. One is already in bloom and yes, I filmed it. We shall have a spotlight on it. It is actually fragrant. This is the one I was telling you about that I think it looks a little bit like some sort of jellies. Can we focus please camera? There we go. So it looks like some sort of jellies in reality. It's beautiful. So yeah, don't worry. We're gonna take a better look at it some other time. But for now they're sitting there. Again, these are the Sarcochylas, which are very upset with me because I cannot keep up with watering since they're in bark. But um, I had some sphagnum moss shortage issues. Not anymore. So they will get repotted probably in a mixture of bark and moss just to conserve some moss. But for now, just in bark, they're very upset with me. They do have some wrinkles, some of them. That's not good. All right, and again, down below, we have some storage. <laughs> Alrighty, next. Well, this is a bit of an improvised little setup here. I have this shelf or stand, better said, from Ikea that I like, and I don't know where to put it in my grow room. And I also have this lamp from Ikea that I like, but again, I don't know what to do with. So I created this little thingy here, which is not new. I always kind of arrange it here and then I move it along somewhere else. But here I have a grow bulb. I don't know if any of these lights are grow lights or just normal lights with different color temperature. I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's full spectrum, but this is a sunsy bulb that I got a million years ago off of Amazon. And here I have some zygopetalums. This is a new zygopetalum I just received from someone and it is the biggest zygopetalum of life. And this is one of my zygopetalums. Currently it is blooming. So yeah, it's just the temporary display, but I might make it permanent for this one because he's so tall. He needs a little repotting, he's a little wobbly, but um, he is very, very tall. So I think that this will be a nice setup for it. <sighs> right, let's move on. Some more IKEA cabinets. By the way, everybody asks me about the decorative containers and also the cabinets. They're all IKEA. I don't have much variety in my area, so typically I go to IKEA to find most of the stuff I'm using. And if it's not from IKEA, it's typically from a flower shop that I have locally. I don't really have a link for them because I prefer to buy locally as much as possible. So yeah, if you have IKEA in your area or in your city, check it out you might find um, these types of decorative pots, the white ones. Right, so here we have my Detolf shelves and they house mostly Tulumnias. And it, it kind of is Tulumnia season. I'm seeing quite a few flower spikes sprouting here and there. Oh, these are some new 
self-watering pots that again I got off of Amazon. I'll talk about them in a different video. I'm currently trying them out. I think they're lovely. I think they're cute for my telumnias because the telumnias are getting dry so so fast. They are, some of them are potted in these tiny little pots which are great but they dry too fast and uh, yeah realistically speaking I'm not on top of watering so I'm trying these self-watering mini pots. Right below I have some new cat layers which these are all coming from the recent hauls that I made last summer or was it spring? Summer, spring, I don't remember. So they're all doing fine but they are kind of new so they're still acclimating. Right. <laughs> This is my second detolf shelf. Again, I have barinas, but the one foot barinas here. We have some more telumnias. We've already seen the snow carmine in a spotlight. I think this is the super brown, which is very beautiful. And yeah, just a bunch of telumnias. And here, do you guys remember that one? That's my Cymbidiella. Oh my goodness, it's still around and look how big it is! No flower spikes yet, but hey, she was quite a young orchid when I got it and maybe it takes a while to reach maturity. I don't know. From pictures, I think they're kind of big. I think they're supposed to look more like, not really cymbidiums, but size-wise they should be kind of as big. So I think this one needs to grow a little bit more, but it looks fantastic. I'm so, so happy that I managed to get it to look nice if you see this particular growth, looks very green. The one in the back always had all sorts of pests because she is a pest magnet, that's why she's in this shelf. But um, I used my Spinosad solutions on it and she's absolutely fine now, no more pests. But still, she's confined to a detolf shelf because I don't trust it. <laughs> Here, oh, there's another IKEA shelf, look at that, this is the Millspo. And the Mills bow is home to various little orchids. Here I have, um, let's say, Vendacious types. They're not really Vandas. Most of them are neo hybrids. I personally cannot bloom neo orchids, no matter how much I try, with no matter how many varieties. It must be something in my climate that's just not okay. However, oh, whoops. It always scares me. But what you heard is this. The sprinklers turned on right so we're gonna talk about this in a little bit hold on it still scares me I mean I have it for a week running already and every time they turn on I get spooked it like my heart literally jumps so give me a second let's wait for it to finish and we'll continue All right, where was I? Neophonicias. I cannot rebloom Neophonicias for the life of me, but if they're hybridized with the Vendacious type, like let's say Renantheras, the story is very different. The story is more like this. Oh yes, this is the first time bloomer as well. This one actually lives here, but because of the flowers, I moved it out since it's very fragrant and I want to enjoy it. And also it doesn't really fit all that much anymore in there because of the flowers. We'll get to it. So on the first, let's say, compartment, I have Neophonicia hybrids and Renantheras or Renanthera Neophonicia hybrids, bunch of Vendacious orchids. Remember this one? This is the Denisoniana hybrid. I told you it had a flower spike. Nope, it was a lie. It was actually a very high cakey. Why, why is it so high? Why? Why did you produce cakey here? I don't know. She's weird. Down below we have kitties these are the catlea seedlings and they're all doing wonderful i lost two actually the two that i showed you in that update video yes sally i lost them i think there was something wrong with them i cannot say they look spectacular when i received them and yeah these guys are much more sensitive than mature ones so if you have some problems with a seedling, it will not respond as well, quote unquote, as a mature orchid. So it happens, it's fine. Calculated risk whenever it comes to seedlings, but it's worth it because out of how many, 16, 15, how many I purchased, only two losses? That's 
pretty good. And it's not a rule that you will always have losses. It really depends on the orchids, on the transport, how long they spent on transport and so on and so forth. I am always prone to having transport issues because um, I live far away. <laughs> what can I say? But anyway, the survivors look very, very good. We have new growths and new roots. Some of these orchids appear to be more vigorous than others, but so far so good. No more losses. Below we have a bunch of new cattleyas as well. These types of cabinets usually stay warm because of the grow lights, so I cannot put something like, I don't know, the Nelly Eiler here because it's gonna be a little bit too hot for it. So I stick to the warm growing type of plants like telumnias, cattleyas, vandas, even Phalaenopsis, everything that is a warm grower resides here. And I especially like to place here newcomers because I don't know them so well. And even if I don't see pests, it doesn't mean they don't have pests. And even if I don't see disease, it doesn't mean they don't have disease. So I like to shelter them a little bit, give them a little second to figure out where they are and to get to know me better. <laughs> and yeah, that's why I have mostly new orchids in these cabinets. Right, enough about the cabinets, daddy blabbed too much and there are things to be done today. Right, there we have some more Brassavolas, the ones that did not fit in the other cabinet. There are also some Phalaenopsis and here, oh my goodness, let's adjust because the sun just came out. Here I have some more Cattleyas and Highlight Orchids. As I was saying, this one, which I didn't tell you the name, this is the um, Darwinara, I believe, Loose Nary. I'll make sure to put tags at the bottom of the screen with the proper names, the new names. Many of these have been reclassified and I, I just can't remember all of this information. So I'll be sure to put tags. But mostly I have highlight van, not vandas, cattleyas here. And they absolutely love this shelf. This is the only shelf of its kind because this is my only southern exposure area but I do have a few buds here and there. I do have some first-time bloomers here and there as well. This one is a first-time bloomer. She's the Salmon Queen, something like that. Very, very excited about it. It's an orchid that I have for quite a bit of time but it's one of those that grows slow, you know. Sorry, I constantly need to adjust the light. Above we have some dendrobiums, some maxillarias, we have a vanda, that's the Bangkok sunset actually. We have the Hawaii Yara, she's finished blooming and I still have space to hang some more stuff there. And below here we have the Phalaenopsis. I have so many Phalaenopsis, it's it's not funny anymore. It is though, because when they're gonna be all in bloom, they're gonna be so so pretty. But yeah, these are all my Phalaenopsis and I also have some new Phalaenopsis here. <laughs> Gonna show them to you in a different video. I did a small little haul. I found some stuff at the flower shop and yeah, this one. Oh, I skipped something. So this is my Maxillaria Shunkiana. It really doesn't like my grow room in the summer. So she shall not breathe the same air as me because she doesn't like it. She needs more humidity. So. For the humidity lovers out there, we have this little thing here, which again, I have a separate video on. And you might have seen the little short that I posted this. Initially is a terrarium. And initially I made it for the second channel, for my crabs. But there are some circumstances that forced me to reconsider. <laughs> Ta-da! Now it's not finished. I need more sprinklers here because it it really doesn't cover all the areas, but do you see what I'm doing here? Do you see? Can you believe Miss Orchid Girl growing mounted orchids? Oh, what is this world coming to? Well, actually, I've grown mounted orchids before. 10 years ago, I actually have videos. Don't watch them because they're cringy, but I do have videos on mounted orchids. I did try to grow mounted orchids and I liked how they look. I just did not like how often I needed to water them. But here's the trick automated watering system. Anyway, we're gonna talk about this 
scenario here some other time. I do want to place the other Dendrobium Cuthbertonis mounted here as well because look at this guy. He is so fresh. So fresh. The flowers are so fresh. Did you know these guys wilt their flowers if they get dehydrated? If you catch it in time, the flowers come back to life. Not really, but they perk up. But if they go beyond the point of no return, they don't. They just dry and fall. Look at the flowers here. Am I overexposed? I might be. There we go. Look how fresh they are. Look at them. Look at them. Look at this guy. Look, he's also just started to grow the roots once again. It took a little bit for it to get used to the setup. About three days, <laughs> four days. Uh, but yeah, he looks so, so good. And of course, we have some territorial some terrestrial terrestrial orchids here and there we also have some mastavalias because why not did you know mastavalias are terrestrial there we go uh these are divisions i have some that are potted in a different setup as well so even if i lose these divisions it's okay don't worry it's trial and error right so this is what i have been working on and of course i'm going to show you this entire setup in a different video below i have some space for some or kids my beautiful beautiful belina she smells so good so nice and that is my bronze maiden this area was empty so i thought well might as well put some more kids here all right let's move on in the back here we have the visjo shelves let me position myself in a better way for you to see do you remember that they used to have a bar like right here actually i still have one that i need to do hold on don't mind all of the mess i need to clean this is bird dander and puff don't mind it so do you remember how these guys looked like yeah they had shelves like this well what i did don't get dizzy what i did was i removed that bar from there and from here as well and look at that i have a shelf that can house tall orchids and believe you me when i tell you i have tall orchids and i don't know where to put them so behold cattleyas yes they can be very tall sometimes the taller the cattleya the more beautiful <laughs> to be fully honest so i cannot just collect small cattleyas because I like the big cattleyas too, the fluffy flowered ones. The fluffy flowered cattleyas, you will never see one like this, tiny. No, those are the Sophronides hybrids. The fluffy ones are something else and they're always tall. So I needed a place for them and here is that place. And I have to say, these guys have been growing under lights for a while and they're doing great. This one has buds in that sheath as well. I'm so excited. It's the Salmon Queen. I did an experiment. I have two Salmon Queens for whatever reason. By mistake, I acquired two. I have one growing under lights and I have one growing under the sun. That one. So it's going to be interesting to see how they will flower because the first test they passed. They are both flowering right now. So it didn't matter that one was grown under lights and one under normal sunlight but will they look different that will be very fun to see and i'm not referring to differences in coloration because that can happen even without the different type of light that can happen because of genetics but what i want to see is like the quality of the flowers are they big how many flowers they produce and so on because i can tell you now these cattleyas can be grown under artificial light without a problem right below we have some mis miscellaneous <laughs> orchids. I acquired some discounted oncidiums. I don't know what they are. They're here. Um, yeah, things that just didn't fit anywhere. I put them here because it's a good space for them. Here is my vanilla. There we go. I told you I want it to grow like on the Visjo shelf. And I'm trying to train her. And then let's move on. Okay. This is my Bulbophyllum Elizabeth and Buckleberry, one of my oldest orchids. She's unruly, she needs repotting, but I got her out of the cabinet because she has flower spikes and they were like growing contorted in the cabinet. I need to find a way, and I think I have an idea, I need to find a way to grow this orchid like in a basket of sorts because she has this very unruly type of growth and whenever she blooms, 
I don't see the flower spikes and I end up losing the flower spikes. It happened to me before. Look how contorted this flower spike is. That's just because the spikes grow like under the pseudobulbs, under the pot or inside the decorative pot. It's, it's a mess. They're pretty messy plants, but I love them. So I need to come up with a better solution for them. And it's time to repot anyway. This one has been in this pot for more than three years. So it is time, definitely. But I'm thinking to go the basket route. So yeah, stay tuned for maybe a video on my bulbul films. Here I have some summer bloomers, summer blooming phalaenopsis. Nothing very interesting here. I have some more bulbul films that need moving. I have a plan with the root, by the way, this is the Rootsta IKEA cabinet. I mean, I have all of their cabinets at this point. See? So I have an idea with the Rootsta cabinets. I already messed up one of mine. I destroyed it, you're gonna see. And I like it. So I might destroy this one as well. I'm gonna show you. So this is temporary, not gonna sit like this. It's a work in progress. And here is my, no, not my final Vistro shelf, my second Vistro shelf with Cattleyas. We have a first time bloomer here, look at it, it's so cute. This is the Yutong Star. We're gonna see how it looks like when it blooms. And this is the Taiwan Mermaid, both first time bloomers. They're not recently purchased though, I have them for at least a year. So it's very exciting to finally see them in bloom. There, you might not recognize them, but do you see these very poor looking cattleyas? These are the bare root cattleyas that we just got and they're all establishing. They are all doing good. So that's a relief because they really did not look good. They lost all of their roots. Here, I have to remove this particular bar, but in order to remove it, I have to kind of partially disassemble the entire Vistro and I'm not up for it just now, but that's what I need to do. That's why I didn't remove this yet. I have again some miscellaneous orchids here, some more Oncidiums. I have my um, Catacetum types. Sad news, the Wine Delight lost its flower spike, but it's okay. It's a new orchid. It needs to adapt to my environment. And here, oh no, what do we have? The, what is this device? It's a humidifier. Why am I using a humidifier? Well, because I destroyed my rootsta. And I did this. Look what I did. Look, what is this? Well, it's a humidity chamber. Let's check the humidity here. Oh my, it's not that big. <laughs> because I turned on the AC. Yes, I had to close the windows because it's very noisy. Typically, the humidity here is about 80%. But when I turn on the AC and there's a lot of dry air wishing uh, through the greenhouse and especially here. The AC actually falls right here. Yeah, the humidity goes low, but typically I have about 80% humidity here. And what do I have inside? I have some Astavalias. I have my Bulbophyllum Medusa, which has, do we see it? It has a flower spike, look. Such a beautiful flower spike. And also I have some Oncidopsis. That's the Francine. This is an unknown one. I also moved my poor Nelly Eilers here because no, they're not doing well outside. Have some Mastavalias, which again, no, they did not do all that great in my climate. So I'm trying, I'm trying guys. I'm trying all sorts of stuff. How did I destroy the rootstock? Well, um, first and foremost, I put duct tape everywhere to kind of seal it off a little bit and conserve the humidity. I still have to put it in a few more places. Then I bolted this IKEA utility pad, I don't know, storage pad, I don't know. I bolted it in, it's in there, and I also drilled a hole for the humidifier. Yes, this is a humidifier meant for terrariums that turns on Depending how I set it up, it can turn on every hour, every half an hour, every two hours, three hours, four hours. It has some settings and it can be on for five, 10, 30 minutes, whatever I decide. And in this way, I have a cloud forest situation here. Did you also notice the temperature? 24 degrees Celsius. It's not cool, but hey, outside it's more than that. It's still summer here, you guys. It, it's November and people aren't going to the beach. I can't, I can't, I, I just can't. Anyway, so it does actually stay cooler than typical. 
Yay! So maybe, maybe just maybe, I can grow Gunnelli Eiler and the Moltoniopsis here. And just to make you a demonstration of how foggy it can get, I'm just gonna turn this on because we're just gonna have to wait an hour for it to turn on. I'm gonna turn it on just so you guys see how foggy it can get here and how it actually works. So yeah, I'm gonna let it run for now. Oh, I also have a, can we see? Maybe. There is actually a fan down there. If I put a fan inside, it's just going to remove all of that humidity. It doesn't work out. But do you see, I have another hole here for the cables. Well, I put a fan right under it and I left a little bit of an opening. So there is ventilation right there because of that little fan, which, let me show you the fan. Do we see it? That's the fan. <laughs> so... It does blow air there. Things are ventilated. It's, it's okay. I tried without a fan and it gets way too humid in there. But there we go. So I'll let this fog up just so you see the degree of fogginess that it can reach. And let me just show you the last bit that I wanted to show you. This is my last Vish show. It's a work in progress. Uh, I have plans for all of these orchids. They're just very temporarily here and they're not, they, they don't like it that much because they're kind of crowded, they don't have enough light. This will be sorted out, let's, let's not look too much at it, <laughs> but yeah. Oh, and here, I forgot to show you, my bio orb. Do you guys remember I made a video about how incredibly let down and disappointed I was by the bio orb? I still am, but I found use for it. I am housing some cute, vampire crabs and if i take care to spray it from time to time it actually works out i don't have orchids here because no orchid actually likes the environment of the biorb but i have a few plants like phytonias and some peperomia and an alocasia there that are actually doing fine and of course there are some crabs in here as well which are hiding but yeah so i found use again for the biorb here i'm incredibly happy about it because it was just sitting there accumulating dust and scratches but now i decided to use it not with orchids though let's not get excited the other vivarium or orchidarium that's the real mvp not this one this is an overpriced piece of anyway um so look here look how foggy it got and this fog actually gets recirculated because of that fan. Maybe you can see there is a bit of a, a little bit of draft there, which recirculates this fog. And look at that. I have the call forest right here. The temperature is starting to go down again because this fog is cool. So I'm really hope. I think this is the closest I will ever be to properly grow the Miltoniopsis and the Nelly Eiler, which absolutely don't grow in my climate. Look at that. That's the one that I got from Amsterdam. Look at that. No, it, it's just, no. The, and this is the yellow one. Again, look at that. She's still alive, I'm surprised, but look at that crinkling. That's not only temperature related, that's also humidity related. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping this will solve my issue. Let's stop the humidifier we've had enough the way i have it set up now is every one hour it works for five minutes and i find that it's enough and it can hold four liters of water we're gonna talk about it in a different video i also have one of these hang hanging um clear shelves the one that you stick on the glass that's why that bulbophyllum is just kind of levitating there uh, but yeah that is about it you guys those are the things that I wanted to show you. That's the tour for today. A very exciting things to work on. And don't worry, all of these like new projects, I do have separate footage with them. I'll make separate videos. And for now, oh, did I show you? That's my working area. That's where I film. Here's another little tank. And yeah, that's, that's it. That's about it. So, did you enjoy hanging out with me today? I hope you did because I enjoyed showing you around and I should do this more often. Remember in the balcony days, I used to do the balcony tour like every month. That's because things could not get cluttered there. There wasn't enough space for clutter. Here, there is, and it's always cluttered and I'm always kind of embarrassed to show you, but you know what? I think I need to do this tour more often 
just so I stay on top of my clutter. Righty, so with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me today. Um, let me know what did you enjoy and what are you excited for to see more in future videos. And with that said, I hope you'll have a great day and a great weekend and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.